This is Bob Swain with the Aniana Church of Christ. This is our positive thought for the day. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hello, everybody. We're glad to have you with us for this positive thought for the day. It is a beautiful Monday outside. We had a stormy weekend, a little bit of thunder and a lot of rain. We're waterlogged outside, but the sun is out shining today. Thanks for watching for just this brief positive spiritual thought. We hope that it will provoke you to pick up your Bible and at least read a few verses. I'm going to be talking today about some verses that are very familiar to us. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 23, 24, and 25. Now before you log off, say, well, I know what he's going to talk about. He's going to talk to us about coming back to church when church gets back together. Uh, I, I, that's not what I want to talk about. I just want to look at three points from these verses, one point from each verse, and see if we can't find the positive thought uh, that's found within if you look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, the Bible makes this statement. It says, Let us hold fast the confession of our faith, nothing wavering, for he who is promised is faithful. There's a positive thought that the Hebrew author gives to these brethren to just trust that God is faithful. You know, we all understand what the word faithful means, and it's something that as we look through this passage, as we look through Hebrews, you, you read this verse and you go, Well, Let's hold fast. Let's trust. Why? But not, not because we're trying to brag about our own faith, not because we're looking at ourselves, but because he who promised is faithful. And verse 24 is very familiar to many people too. And it, it builds into what oftentimes preachers talk about. They want to talk about verse 25 where it says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. But I want you to listen to what the Bible says. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. King James Version actually says, let us consider how to provoke one another. Uh, a couple of words I want you to notice in this passage. First, I want you to notice the word consider. That means you've got to think about it. If you're considering something, you're engaging your mind. I would encourage you this time, this week, and this positive thought to put your mind to work, put your brain to use, and try to consider what can I do to stir up love in my brethren? And what can I do to stir up good works in my brethren? I know a lot of people are at home. A lot of people are, are trapped, I guess you could say, for lack of better terms, at least for a few more weeks uh, during this quarantine. And they're sitting at home saying, well, I don't have anything to do. Well, there actually are things we could do. I've encouraged you already once in one of these positive thoughts to call and check on one another. But today I want to take it a step further. I want you to put your mind to use. I want you to consider, what can I do for my brethren to actually encourage them to spread love and to do good? As I thought about this passage, I thought about, well, how would I encourage the congregation here today? One of the best ways that we can stir up, that we can provoke one another, that we can encourage one another to actually do something, is to basically say, hey, Come with me and let's do this. I know Brother Dennis has been having an outstanding Bible class on Wednesday night during the live stream. He's been giving you homework assignments. <clears throat> One of the homework assignments from this week about eat is something that right now we actually can't get out and physically do. But I'd like to give you a homework assignment and just this brief thought. Put your mind to use and think, who can you contact from our congregation this week and say, hey, let's do something together, something good. Let's do some good works together. Maybe it will be just a calling of somebody. Maybe it will be sending somebody a letter. Maybe it be sending a couple of texts to somebody. Maybe you put your mind together and say, hey, once all this lockdown is over, let's do something good together. For what purpose? To encourage one another. And that's what it says in verse 25. It says, not uh, neglecting to meet together as the habit of some is, but encouraging one another. There's that thought again. This is what he's really, he, he's giving them courage saying, hey, trust that God is faithful. He's giving them encouragement saying, hey, provoke or stir up one another towards love and good work. And then he says to encourage one another. But the thought that I really want to take from verse 25 is this, the last phrase there, as you see that day approaching. There's been a lot of theological t debate over what that day is. Some people have suggested that that day is judgment day, uh, the second coming of Christ, the end of time, that day. I personally hold the opinion that that day that he was talking about was the Lord's day, the first day of the week. He was encouraging these Hebrew brethren to 
encourage one another, to provoke one another, to strengthen one another as they looked forward to the Lord's day when they would be together, when they would actually be, as mentioned in verse 25, meeting. So I know that right now we're not meeting, we're doing live stream, but I'll tell you what this, uh, let me just share this this final thought with you. As uh, you think about these three pieces of advice, to trust God to be faithful, to consider how to stir one another up towards love and good works, actually put your mind to use and try to think of ways, hey, let, let me get somebody and recruit somebody, for lack of a better term, that we can do good together as we look forward to that day. And some of you are probably thinking, well, that day is not going to be this week because we can't gather together on the Lord's Day this week. No, but I'll tell you this, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and we do have earnest expectation. We do have something to look forward to because we are not too far off from the day when we will be able to get back together on the Lord's Day, the first day of the week, and worship. And I hope that you'll just take this brief positive thought and uh, let it engage your mind. Trust God to be faithful. Put your mind to use considering ways that you can stir up your brethren, the ones you love, the ones that you're used to being around, to do something good. That's your homework assignment. Find somebody say, hey, let's do something good for somebody else. It might be your spouse or somebody in your home. It might be that you reach out to some other member of the church and say, hey, is there something good we can do for so-and-so? And then finally, have that earnest expectation, that looking forward to the day that we can all be back together. Thank you for joining in for this positive thought. I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day. Like I said, step outside. I'm trying to look out my window. It's a wonderful, sunshiny, bright, wonderful Monday morning. We just hope that you have a blessed day. Thank you for logging in.